Hi, I'm Gazza. I've been working on this uh, large 12 and a half inch Dobsonian telescope. But before I take you through the steps of building this, I'm going to go through and restore this old Tasco reflector telescope which I recently acquired. So the telescope is a Newtonian reflector, 900 millimeter focal length with an aperture of 114 millimeter. Um, Tasco had a habit of making really good telescopes back in the 80s and early 90s when all their products were made in uh, Japan. This is however made in China as all other optics nowadays. Uh, just from the outset, it seems to be a lot of rust on uh, all the metallic parts, so all this will need to be stripped down. The tripod is in good condition. Structurally, the tripod itself is actually not in bad condition at all. You just need to remove all the rust from it. The telescope itself, structurally, is fine. There's no breakages, just a few scratches and dents, but hopefully nothing that'll uh, affect the optics itself. And if I show you a quick peek at the mirror there. And there's the mirror. Mirror is in good condition. It does need some cleaning, but there's no scratches on it. Same goes for the secondary mirror. Uh, all moving parts move, but uh, do require a bit of greasing and a bit of cleaning. The declination axis smooth controller works, so does the right ascension axis as well. Right, so the tripod has been disassembled. As you can see, most of these screws have uh, rust on them, so I'm going to dip it in a, I'm going to soak it in a solution of vinegar and um, distilled water for about 20 minutes. Then I'll use a Dremel tool to help assist in removing the rust. Uh, the tripod legs are all aluminium, so they're fine. However, there's a little bit of rust remnants on all the plastic parts, so I'll be cleaning them as well. The metal tray for the eyepiece is fine. However, the tabs that carry the metal tray have all been bent, so I've got to bend them back using pliers or a hammer just to make it flat again. The screws for securing the tripod legs are also got a bit of rust, so we need to uh, Soak that in a solution of uh, vinegar and water, and then we'll uh, give them a really good clean with the uh, with the Dremel tool. So with the rust removal, um, because the rust is actually very thick, I'm going to use the Dremel tool with the uh, metallic brush attachment there, and that'll allow me to dig through and remove those uh, rust uh, layers, and then I can go back and wipe the uh, the different parts with WD-40. But for now, there's the method I'll be using to remove the uh, the thick layer of rust. And as you can see, it's looking pretty good already. And I'm just going to repeat the process with the uh, other screws and attachments. Now I'm just going to flatten those tabs I said earlier on. Try and get them as flat as possible. All the rust has been removed from the screws, dipped them back into the uh, vinegar solution, only temporarily, and I'll just empty them out, uh, uh, give them a good wipe, and then uh, remove all the excess uh, water from them. So the tripod legs have been cleaned, all the screws have uh, been cleaned as well, there's no rust on them whatsoever. Now from here we're going to uh, clean up the mount and the tripod so we can get the uh, tripod secure onto it. So the tripod mount and the actual equatorial mount itself, like I said, are in good condition. Uh, there is a little bit of rust on some of the screws, so I'll uh, dismantle that and then clean it, or give it a really good clean and then put it back together. As you can see, there's a uh, no rust here, just a little bit of rust on the uh, bearing screw, so we'll give that a quick clean. I won't be using the Dremel because the rust layer is very thin, just a little bit WD-40 and give it a really good scrub, and that should be more than enough. And the same goes for the altitude adjustment knob here as well. Just a bit of a clean from the inside. Right, since so the amount dismantled, got the slow motion controllers, counterweight rod, 
and the adjustment knobs for the actual alt, uh, azimuth and altitude settings. I'm going to leave the tube rings on the uh, declination axis because there's no problems with it at all. There's no rust or there's no issues, so I'll just keep them there. I will, however, um, add some WD-40 to the declination axis there to make it smooth and also some for the right ascension axis. So there's a little lid here. I'll just, uh, it's just a plastic cap, I'll remove that and put some WD-40 so it goes inside the bearings and just makes it a little bit smooth. Otherwise, the mount is uh, in good condition, so I'll just uh, give it a quick clean and um, put it back together. So the uh, tripod of the mount have been uh, repaired and refurbished. As you can see, you've got really smooth motion on the uh, right ascension axis and off declination axis, and the smooth controls also both work really fine. Now I'm going to go over and uh, go through the optical tube assembly. So the tube has been uh, taken apart completely. Um, it seems to be mainly in good condition. There's uh, almost uh, very few parts that are rusty, uh, just a few screws for the focus, so otherwise the rest of it is just in need of a clean. There's the secondary mirror. Secondary mirror is in need of a clean as well. And the primary mirror is in perfect condition, just needs a little bit of a clean. My intent is to take the clips off, give the mirror a really good clean in um, distilled water and a bit of alcohol, and then return it. Once that's done, we can go back and clean all the other parts individually and slowly put it back together. The finder scope is also in uh, good condition as well, so we'll uh, just give the lenses a good clean there. There's the mirror cell completely taken apart. You've got your mirror and your uh, mirror carrier and the adjustment knobs and the mirror clips itself. So now I'm going to show you how I'm going to clean the actual mirror itself. So we start by running uh, some of the lukewarm water on the actual mirror surface itself. Make sure you don't touch the mirror at all. Just run the water on the surface. That way it'll try and soak it up and get rid of all the large pieces of debris that's on it. So have a bath of uh, water, a little bit of detergent and some alcohol. Now we're just going to dip the mirror inside and then give it a clean with uh, cotton pads. From here, you take your cotton pad or cotton wool, let it soak in, and then very gently rub the surface of the mirror. Try and remove any, any of those stains. It's just bubbles being turned up from the detergent. And just give it a it's looking good. Just a few more iterations and it should be good. So try not to get your fingerprints on the mirror surface itself. But this action here, easy does it, just a little bit of pressure. If there's a stubborn spot with any gunk or dirt on it, you just repeat the process along the area where the gunk is till it comes off. So once you've uh, done scrubbing it, under the water, just run it under the uh, tap for about uh, 30 seconds to try and clean off all the soap and then just leave it out to dry. Yeah, it's uh, looking really good. Yeah, I'm just going to reassemble the uh, mirror cell back onto mirror base itself and once that's done we can uh, put the mirror back on and then we'll go in and clean the secondary mirror. With the secondary mirror I'm not going to actually submerge it in the solution I'm just going to take the um, wet cotton pad I used earlier on and just use it on the mirror and just uh, swipe it very gently. And just Apply a thin layer of the solution and 
get it soaked really well and then we'll just run it underwater. And we just ran the mirror underwater, trying not to get any other water on the metallic parts. Now we'll just use the uh, dry cotton pad to uh, wipe off any other excess drops. And secondary mirror is now complete. And for the focuser we're going to clean the uh, focusing knob and then clean the tracks and the focusing tube and just re-grease that and then clean out the um, outer focuser and then the mounting ring and then we'll be good to go. So the focuser is complete. Okay. Very nice smooth transition and now I'm going to put it back on the tube along with the uh, secondary mirror. And there's my little helper. Right, so all the work is complete on the optical tube. As you can see, I've just reassembled it. Uh, it's all looking really good, all smooth transition from RA and deck. Smooth controls work really well. The focus has been fixed. That's all been cleaned. And the mirror's all been cleaned, or both mirrors have all been cleaned and collimated. <clears throat> Try to get rid of as much dirt as possible. Um, the rest of these are just nicks and scratches. There's, there's nothing I can do about that. However, the telescope was tested last night against a few uh, astronomical targets, and the targets were very, and the views were very impressive. Uh, thanks for watching once again. Uh, this video is just a really good example of how you can go on about restoring an old piece of optical equipment and still get much use out of it. You don't have to buy anything that's brand new. If you're happy to buy something that's a little bit older and used, just bring it up to a working standard, and that should really suffice. Thanks for watching.